All right, all right, all right. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, brothers and sisters all over the world. The name of this channel is The African Times, and I'm Thomas. All right, let's get to it. Talk a little bit about the election. Check it out. Not the election, the election, but the first debate of the election. All right, check it out. All right, all right, we're going to talk about this election, a reaction to the election debate. Two candidates, Trump and Biden, Biden and Trump, and it's interesting debate, a lot of topics, and just at the outset, I know the big thing was, will, will Biden stumble and bumble his way through it because of senility? And would Trump thrash him? Because Trump with his fiery oratory. Yeah, all that. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. So we'll talk about a couple of topics. But since we're just off the top, one of the most important things that they talked about, I found very interesting. It was so important, so very important to the American people. And to that very thing that would be helpful to the American people. Uh, the golf course, golfing, yeah, uh, who was a better golfer, who could drive the ball the furthest, who had the best handicap, was it, was it Trump, was it Biden, which one would be the winner? if they were to play each other in a round of golf. And I know that this is very important for us to understand because of the great impact it would have on the American people. And just so happens, I happen to be walking next to a golf course here in Africa. Beautiful golf course too. Haven't gotten a chance to play it, so I wonder, play on it rather, but I wonder who would be the better golfer here? Whose handicap is lower? Whose handicap is better? Who could drive the ball further? Certainly, if we could figure those things out, we could solve many of the problems, many of the problems facing the, the American people, you know, you know, like our students, you know, the, the, the good students who were told if they go to college and they do well, they could graduate, get a good job and uh, have a great life, you know, the American dream. So we better figure out quickly. Who would be the best golfer, Biden or Trump? And we need to do that quickly because I think we vote in November, right? So we need to know, we need to know that that the answer to that question immediately, urgently. Uh, so, uh, but like I said, um, we'll set that to the back burner. We'll come back to that. The other topic that came up was the war. Yeah, you know. Um, Trump, Trump came out like, you know, gangbusters, basically said that the war is going on because, you know, Biden is incapable of stopping the war. OK. All right. And clearly there's a war going on and there seems to be undeniable proof that the United States, America, is providing at the minimum. The proof is there because they say it themselves. Financial support for the war. Billions, hundreds of billions uh, to both Ukraine and Israel. If you look through there, boy, you can see how beautiful the golf course is behind those trees. That lighted area down there, that's the golf course. I can't wait to get a get an opportunity to play there. But so anyway, there providing billions billions and so they discussed it and Trump brought out a brilliant point that uh, Biden apparently uh, can't seem to stop the war doesn't want to stop the war isn't planning on stopping the war and is obviously supporting the war and Trump brought up a brilliant point when he said that before 
he was even elected. If 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 the if the people are going to elect him, he'll stop the war even before he takes office. Now that's a brilliant, a brilliant point. Right, let me make sure you understand what I'm saying here. He said that if we elect him, the good American people through their voting, their democracy, if they vote him to be the president and he wins, then he will stop the war before he even takes office. Now, again, I said it's a brilliant statement. And I think it's brilliant in that the brilliance is in the stupidity of the statement. Because I don't know about you. I really don't know about you at all. But let me tell you something. For me, aren't there people dying? Hundreds of thousands of people dying right now? Like, uh, dying like soldiers, civilians, children, women, buildings are being destroyed as a result of the war. So, if he said that he would stop it before he even takes office, inherent in that statement is the fact that he's saying he can stop it. He can stop it. Now, if you recall, just not too long ago, he said he could stop it in 24 hours. That's what's being reported. Okay, if you are a loving, caring, sane individual, rational and reasonable, why wouldn't you just stop it now, since you can, stop it now, to save the lives of the people, to resolve the issue, then the people, the American people, no, have no question but to think that you're a great person and deserving of the presidency because you stopped the war even before you got there. That's what you said, uh, Mr. Trump. That's what you said. Now, the other thing that's very brilliant in its stupidity is that if you can stop the war now and you take the office, I think the president, president, the inauguration or whatever is in January or some foolishness like that, then you're not president. This is what you're saying, that you can stop it without even being president. You don't need to be the president. So I have to ask you then, good Mr. Trump, why are you even waiting to see if you become president to stop it? You could save the life. You could be a hero. You could save the lives of the children, save the lives of the parents, save the lives of the old people, save the infrastructure, help put the world back in a stable position. All the things that you say that you would do if the people elected you. Now, now here's the thing. You all have a record of what he said. And if he becomes elected. Now, let's see if he stops it right away. Let's see if he can do that. And and just so all you know, me personally, I don't have any faith or belief or <laughs> that he's going to do that because he helped start it. He helped start. Do, don't you understand? Let me tell you something. Don't forget. Don't forget. He. T another point he brought up is, you know, Iran and, uh, and Russia. And, uh, no, he, he ordered according to him. And remember, when I say he, whether it's Biden, Trump, Bush, Clinton, you know, it doesn't matter. Uh, Bush won. Carter, uh, any of them, it doesn't matter. They're operating in a system. It's not them. These are the same people who just do what they, they need to do. Remember, if he's going to stop it, I'm telling you, he started it, helped start it. 
he ordered, according to them, he, the president, ordered the murder of that Iranian general. Okay? Well, you think that's not going to create animosity and hatred? And, oh, well, he was a dangerous person. He was doing this. He's doing this. Is that all that has to be done to order the assassination of people? It's just simply you believe and you say and you... That's it? Okay. No problem. So that was another interesting point. He said he'd stop the war. They talked about helping the people, helping the kids with their student loans. And Now, here's an interesting point. Biden said he passed the greatest legislation to help and, and, and forgive the student loans. And Okay. No problem. And Trump saying, no, he gave more money to the to the black, you know, HBCs, you know, whatever, historically black university. Oh, okay. No, no, no problem. No problem. All right, so let's take the one. Whether it's Biden or Trump, the issue has nothing to do with forgiveness. See, they're together. They're the same. The education shouldn't be so unaffordable that only wealthy people can afford to pay it. And you should not have to take student loans because if you didn't have to take student loans, you would not have to have the debt. You would not have to pay the bill. It wouldn't be necessary. So we don't need either one of you to tell us that. Okay. All right, I had to take a quick stop there just to, you're gonna hear me breathing because I had to do a, a little running. My son gave me an instruction. He's out at, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, he's out at his football practice and he wanted me to, to jog. He said I was being lazy walking around. He told me I should run, so I had to obey his instructions. Of course, he's six years old and I'm almost 60. So he can run all day, I can't. So anyway, the whole point of what I was saying to you is that if we just did not have the high cost of the college education, there would be no need to have loan forgiveness. But you don't hear either one of them talking about that. It's a misdirection. It's what they do. They focus you on little nonsense things that are still in line with maintaining the status quo of things. In this case, education. Not that we should have free education like they do in Germany and some other places. It's not an issue of does the government have the money. It has nothing to do with that. It has a lot to do with private, private and public. A lot to do and not all. Because the public universities you can't afford either, you need a loan. Private universities can't afford it, you need a loan. It's all the same. They're following the same system. So it's misdirection on both their parts. It makes no difference which one you vote. They're not going to change it. Forgive the loans for the group of people you're forgiving the loan for, but the cost of the education is still high. The other people, <clears throat> they have to pay for it. So it just starts the problem all over again. And who benefits? Rich people. The class that has the money that can afford to keep their kids in school. Placing the poor and underprivileged children at a disadvantage. Maintaining the, <clears throat> the status quo. The leadership. You can call them oligarchs. Corporate class. Ruling class. You know, white supremacists. You can call them anything you want. It's the same, same people implementing the same, same programs. It's not going to change. <clears throat> so, what we have here is misleading the public in such a way that focuses their attention on an issue that's not going to solve their problem. Now, let's move away from that. And that's the education trend. Okay, I told you, solving the war, misdirection. He's talking about he can stop that war. But all at the same time, let's go back to 2019. I believe it was 2019 
you can check the dates yourself. Stopping the war. I told you, he killed a general. Said the man was dangerous and he committed so many acts of terrorism. Okay. Same thing with Saddam Hussein. Same thing. Now, there was a nuclear treaty that was agreed to. And back in 2019, I think the United States, and this happened to be, I believe, during the Trump administration, agreed to reduce a particular set of nuclear weapons, reduce them or not build them, and all of that. Whatever the details were, the point was an effort by countries, Russia, the United States, and maybe others, but definitely those two, to reduce this particular type of missile. Well, during the Trump administration, 2019, somewhere around, and I think he was still president, they revoked the agreement or stopped going by the agreement, said they're no longer going to follow the agreement, whatever you want to call it. That, that is not trying to be against war. That's maintaining it. Maintaining it. So they, that was the next issue. Oh, we're going to talk about China. China's cheating. China's just, both of them, Biden, tariffs, taxes, no free trade. Oh, free trade. No, limiting that. They put a 100% tariff on electric vehicles because China is out producing the rest of the world with electric vehicles. So no free trade. They're all you people who, oh, you know, I'm, I'm American, free trade. All that stuff is on paper. They don't follow any of it. And neither one of them will follow it because yo, yo, both Biden and Trump, both of your candidates, the candidates we picked, Oh, yeah, we didn't pick them. No, they, they, they give them to us to pick, right? I mean, because I, I can think of some other people who might do a much better job. But those people will never see the light of day in that office. So anyway, to finish the point on China, Trump, who said China's cheating, China's doing this and China's doing that. All a bunch of nonsense. Let me tell you something. All of you know Walmart, yes? You know Walmart, that biggest retailer in the world, right? Yeah, you know Walmart. Okay, how do you think Walmart became Walmart? How do you think that? Oh, China's stealing our technology. No, China did not plan fair. Let me tell you something. Walmart and all of the other organizations, companies and all that, government included, agreed made a deal with the government of China, the, the people of China, to mass produce many, many products. As many as they could think of that they could produce cheaply over there. And how did they do that? The people agreed. China, they agreed, okay, we will allow you to come here and manufacture and get the benefit of lower labor costs. Meaning the people. You don't have to pay them wages. You don't have to pay the insurance. You don't have to pay, do all these things you have to do in America. You don't have to do that. You go over there and you pay those people less, have them produce the goods and services, goods. And then, then after you have those people do that, you ship the products back to America and all over the world. It's cheaper for them to build it over there, ship it all the way back over here, and sell it. Now, this is what both corporate government groups agreed to. No cheating. No, even though they cheated. Oh, they're cheating. No, no, they agreed to that. They agreed to that 40, 50 years ago. So, China, because they're not they're smart people, they're not stupid people. Everybody isn't going to be and agreed to be at the, the, the foot of the American capitalists. So what they agreed to, I'm talking about China, what they agreed to was, okay, 
you can come over here and your companies will get filthy rich. Our people, we're going to get rich too. There's going to be some of them that's going to get rich too. Okay, but before you come over here and manufacture, you have to agree that your technology, the machines, the industrialization, the mechanical nature, everything that you're doing, however you're doing it, in, in the in the modern way that will allow you to mass produce these items, you got to share that technology with us. Otherwise, we we're not going to do it. There's even some talk that they made them agree that if you come over here and you open a business, the business you open is not going to be uh, fully owned by you. You're going to have to share it with some Chinese people. That part I don't know if it's true, but it doesn't really even matter because the point is that they didn't cheat. They all agreed to share the technology. So China, once they got the technology, they then had the information necessary through agreement, not cheating, through agreement, to now build their own factories and develop competition for America. Competition for the W capitalist class. This is what these people did. Competition. And as it turns out, in some areas, for example, the electric vehicles, they're out competing America and other people in the world. So what did America do? They violated their own free trade policy. Free trade, huh? I told you before, there's no such thing. These people control the market. The invisible hand, that's all a lie. What did they do? They put a 100% tariff on electric vehicles. 100% tariff. In other words, if the Chinese vehicle is selling for 20000 they're going to sell it for 40000 here in America. Which means, and whether you realize it or not, China isn't paying that money. No, it's the individual who wants to sell that product in America. They can't, they can't, they pay the tax. They pay the tariff, which really means the cost is shifted to you, the buyer, because you can't buy the car at 20000 which is what they want to sell it for. And I'm giving you a, an example what the actual cost is. You can look it up yourself, what they sell them for. But for you, because there's a tariff, that cost goes to you. Okay? So neither one of these candidates during the debate... Neither one of these candidates during the debate brought up these issues. And whether you think that that's protecting American companies, no, ultimately, when you go and you follow the economic progress, the economic development that results from a tariff, you're going to see many, many businesses that are negatively impacted. There's just a few businesses that become Impacted. That's why you have some businesses, they're for the tariffs. But other businesses, it hurts them, so they're not for it. And so you get this fighting between capitalist groups, the business class. But none of them, candidate, both candidates, or the business class, are thinking about you, your family, your children, and the education. They're not thinking about that. They're thinking about the profit. And you've been convinced through their schools and their educations that, oh, they're supposed to think about profit. That's what it's about. No, you fool. No, it's not about that. Don't let them make you into a fool. It has nothing to do with that. Because the most important thing is not profit. It's people. Families. You can have successful businesses where the profits are shared among the people in such a way that the people have a good standard of living. Now, all of you people who disagree with that, I mean, sure, you're foolish. Don't you know that's what the American dream was built on? The idea of sharing the wealth from the success of the businesses in America and America being the best business. And then they tell you get a middle class so everybody can get a house and a car and they have afford the, the things that make life comfortable. Don't you see? But now they've convinced you through years of propaganda that that's still happening, but you just don't see it. And then they convince you while you're struggling. They got a smaller, smaller, smaller group of people 
who receive that American dream. But the great majority of you struggle week to week, week to week. Me too, all of us, we're in the same boat. And so they tell you that no, it's you. It's something you're doing. That's why you're not successful like, and then they point out this small group of people in the middle class, you know, the wealthy people, they make you think they're heroes. And then you buy in. This, these things, is what took place in the debate. The misdirection, talking about things that will not change your life in any way. Two candidates you did not select. You never select the candidates. You don't vote for the people. They present to you a choice of people none of you know. And just so you know, how they make you feel like you <clears throat> have picked these people, did they refer to them by their brand? If it's a family brand, they're going to say Bill. They're going to say Hillary, Barack, Michelle, Joe. they first names. You don't know these people. You don't know these people at, at all. You know, but the brand. So what brand? Trump's brand is Trump. Not Donald, because he don't want you. He don't want you to feel that way about him. He wants to be harsh, so he creates a business brand. Trump, the name Trump Plaza. Trump, Trump, Trump. That's what they do. Bush was the same way, though a less harsh brand. It was still a business brand. Bush, you know, Cheney. Now, to ease up with the good sister, Condi. You understand? This is how they sell these things to you so that you'll be more willing to accept the policies by these people that they promote and make it acceptable to you. You'll accept your poison. You'll accept your punishment. You'll accept the abuse because it's coming from Bill, Joe, Barack. You see? This is what they do. So, again, no issues were discussed or no changes were discussed at all that's going to change your situation regardless which one you vote for. And just to let you know, Joe, he didn't do that that bad. I mean, you know, considering 81 years old, I think is his age. He didn't stumble that much. He had a couple of points where he wandered off, but he he's 81 years old. So he's got an excuse. What's Trump's excuse for rambling about a bunch of nonsense that won't help anybody? So either way, you get the same result. OK. All right, everybody just thought I'd let you let you get a little of my insight into Remember, it's the most important election of your life. This is the first presidential debate for the election of your life. Everybody needs to vote. <laughs> all right, y'all. All right, I love you all. Ooh, 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 ooh.